the fossil forest is in a layer of rocks known as the Purbeck Limestone Group. Down below us, and we won't get too close to the edge here, uh, is the Portland Limestone. And the Portland Limestone marks the beginning of the end of the Jurassic period. It was deposited in shallow, warm tropical seas and contains things like bivalves, gastropods and really large ammonites. Towards the end of the Jurassic period, sea levels were falling at an alarming rate. By the time we enter the Purbeck Limestone Group, we had large swaths of land exposed for the first time in millions of years. On this exposed coastal region, a shallow saltwater lagoon was left behind, and on its margins is where the fossil forest began to develop. So this layer is the great dirt bed, and you'll notice that its color and its texture are really similar to modern day soil. And that's because it's a paleo sole, so it represents a layer of dirt, a layer of soil that's formed as this lagoon has dried out for a significant period of time. And it's the layer in which all of the fossil trees that form the fossil forest grew. What was the death of the fossil forest? Well, as we noted earlier, the forest grew on the edges of a saltwater lagoon it was left behind by retreating seas at the end of the Jurassic period. Now, as water levels in this lagoon changed, eventually it flooded the margins of the forest and the salt rich water pickled the trees and killed everything that was living in the dirt. thrombolites provides a really good example um, where we can unpick how they form. So these round examples, and there's two just over here, probably formed around the base of in situ upright tree trunks. Now we're missing the tree trunk from the middle unfortunately, but this example in the middle, this much longer example, grew around a fallen tree trunk. So it formed around the edges, the base and over the top of a large tree that had obviously snapped perhaps in seasonal storms and, and that's what's formed the shape of this thrombolite here. So for all this talk of the fossil forest, you'll notice that a lot of these thrombolites are actually without the fossil wood. Now there's two possible reasons for that. Firstly, it may not have preserved in the first place. So these thrombolites grew around the outside of trees and were very resistant to the process of fossilization, whereas wood is often easily decayed and simply might not have survived. The alternative is that it was all collected. So this site's been open and exposed for tens of years, and it might be that fossil collectors before us have come and removed all of the fossil wood. It's for this reason that the fossil forest is particularly vulnerable to damage. And so that we ask that anybody coming to visit the fossil forest doesn't attempt to collect any of the fossils they see here. Simply take pictures um, and enjoy the memory that way. So here we have two separate thrombolites. And in these depressions here, this is where the original tree trunk would have sat. It's probably been collected by Victorian fossil collectors, uh, or it perhaps wasn't preserved in the first place. But you'll notice that each of these individual thrombolites, as they've grown, have merged together and sandwiched together to form this sort of one big uh, amorphous structure. So these layers are evaporites and they represent the drying out of the lagoon, um, perhaps in, in hot, arid summers or, or for years at a time. Now you'll notice that each of these is deposited in fine layers, some are thinner than others, but all of them deform around these large thrombolytic structures. So this layer, rather unsurprisingly, is called the broken beds. So all of these pieces of rock have been mixed up, jumbled together and reoriented by enormous tectonic pressures. So this is a piece of fossil wood that originated from the fossil forest layer, but not here at Lulworth. 
So this piece was flown in by helicopter. It was donated by Albion Stone over on the Isle of Portland. And it's been brought here to show visitors what these trees would have looked like when they were in situ. So it's remarkable, the level of detail, you can see knots, individual striations, and when cut and polished, you can identify tree rings and seasonal variations, just like with modern trees.